Empire Range. In 1904, there were two marine camps uh, established on the Isthmus of Panama. And one of those was uh, named Camp Elliott, which lo was located near the town of Coabra on what is now the west bank of the canal. And this is pretty much in the central part of the isthmus. Uh, following the completion of the Panama Canal, the Panama Canal government began a policy of giving the army its excess building and property in two former construction er area error communities. Um, two of the communities they no longer required were Culabra and Empire. Empire was transferred to the Army on November 25th, 1914, and Calabra was transferred on March 25th, 1915. The land and buildings of both the abandoned construction era communities were incorporated into Camp Elliott. Later, Camp Elliott was renamed Camp Gulliard. Then on October 8th, 1927, after the completion of Fort Davis on the Atlantic side and Fort Clayton on the Pacific side, the uh, Camp Gilliard was deactivated. Uh, the remaining buildings were either moved or demolished and the land was converted to be part of a, an artillery practice range and it was called Empire Range. Empire Range was an odd shape with uh, firing positions fanned out around a central impact area. In, 19, in September 1994, part of Empire Range uh, was transferred into temporary camps for Cuban migrants during Operation Safe Haven. There was a study that was conduct, conducted in the late 90s uh, as part of the transition to Panama. And the study looked at unexploded ordnance, uh, UXO, on the ranges. And um, Empire Range also had a, uh, a TTC, Tropical Test Center, uh, location that shows up on one of their maps. Uh, Empire Range was fully turned over to the Republic of Panama in 1999. So the points that, um, that I'm using in Empire Range were, uh, for the most part, uh, former firing points or uh, structures used for communications and et cetera. Uh, those areas were uh, typically kept clear of uh, vegetation as much as possible. Um, this first one is firing point 11. And uh, the Empire Range was uh, reported by uh, uh, Brian Shee, Kevin McElroy, uh, and Jack Allray. And this particular area, uh, back out here some, this is the Mir Flores Locks location. And the new part uh, that was added uh, is right here. And when they did that, they actually took part of what was uh, Empire Range and it was esca uh, excavated out. Uh, there was like an observation point and, and uh, so forth. And also in looking at it uh, over a period of time, using uh, different views on Google Earth Pro, uh, it appears that uh, the soil and material that was excavated from here was uh, spread around several areas, including very close or over this firing point uh, 19, 
and also down in part of what had been the central impact area and also up in, in this direction, which had uh, other firing points and so forth. I want to show you uh, some of the attachments here. If we go to our uh, 1969 low resolution view, we're right on the edge here in this area. And you can see uh, roadways and, and the fact that it's uh, been kept somewhat clear. This also shows you you know, there was a fair amount of distance between there and the canal, but uh, with the new locks, they, they took out this area here. Now, um, I mentioned there were construction era towns and one of them was called Elliot. And this is actually a photograph of uh, the, uh, the town Elliot and it was taken in 1908. This is a photograph of Camp Elliot, and we don't know the, the date on this. Um, Camp Elliot initially was um, used by, uh, by the Marines, and then um, uh, was used by the Army. This is a 1920 photograph of Camp Gilliard and um, Camp Elliot was renamed Camp Elliot, uh, Gilliard. And you can see the canal over on the side. And all of these things were torn down. Buildings were either removed or whatever and it became uh, Empire Range. And this is a map showing the different ranges and this is Empire Range here. And as I mentioned, it's kind of an odd shape. The reason being that uh, it had firing points located around the perimeter and it had a central impact area. And on our TTC map, um, we're talking this point right here and they mark it as the Empire Range area. Now I have uh, a couple things that are linked to this um, that uh, we wanna take a look at. And this first one is the, uh, uh, the range study that I mentioned. And this is the final report, July, 1998. And uh, this uh, study, one of the primary things that I used it for was that it gives coordinates of the different points on the, uh, uh, on the range. So I was able to locate firing points and so forth. Uh, the study itself, for anyone that's interested, uh, it was uh, looking at unexploded ordnance and... Uh, or UXO on the ranges. And uh, they were trying to uh, find out the extent of possible uh, UXO concentrations. And the study was done by uh, some civilian uh, personnel, but also uh, people from both the Army and Navy participated in this. And they go through and they talk about uh, the uh, techniques they use and the process they're gonna follow and, and how they were going to um, divide up the areas and so forth uh, to do like a grid sweep and a fan sweep and et cetera. And they talk about each point in some, uh, to some amount. Uh, the next thing is, this is a, uh, a post that uh, was done while the study was going on. This particular one is March 1997. And uh, they talk about 
uh, the study itself and uh, also complications on, on site cleanup and so forth. And uh, they also mentioned that there was um, uh, fine here. Uh, they, they found uh, mentions of chemical agents uh, used by the Army and tests by the uh, uh, Tropical Test Center uh, on New Empire Range is what they called it. And um, they said, well, that's, that was out of the scope of the, this particular study and that, you know, it was tasked with looking for UXO. But um, they, they felt in this post that there's enough information on chemical uh, contamination to warrant further investigation. Okay, let's move on to our next point. And our next point is uh, firing point 11. And um, this is the current view. And uh, this road was widened um, since uh, the area was turned over to Panama. <clears throat> and when I looked at it uh, over time in Google Earth Pro, it does appear that in this particular area, um, material for construction and, per and perhaps some vehicles were stored in here while they were doing the construction. Um, <clears throat> and if we look at um, the range study, for this were uh, firing point 11. Uh, they described it as a former mortar and howitzer firing point located on a flat hilltop. Um, and they felt it was uh, a low concern as far as unexploded, unexploded ordnance. The next point is firing point 15. Let me, before I go to this, let me go back to firing point 11. I want to show you, even though it's low res resolution on, uh, on our map, um, this is from 1969, and you can see the uh, you can see the outline of the area, and this is the road that was widened. And that's just our range map again. All right, so. Back to um, our next point, which is uh, firing point uh, 15. Um, I saw no indication that uh, any particular kind of construction activity or anything went on in this area. Um, when I looked at it over the years in Google Earth Pro. Um, this was also classified by the, the UXO study as an area of no concern. So if we go through our, our 1969 view, it clearly shows up just the way it, it does now. And that's our range study. And that's our tropical test center map. And if I pull out here a little bit on this top, it is um, located on a hilltop. 
as you can see. And the central impact area was down in here. Okay, firing point 15. And uh, the study said uh, firing point 15 was a former 105 millimeter howitzer firing point located on a flat hilltop, which is uh, exactly what we, we see when we look at it here. Okay, our next point was called the Tire House Complex. And um, this is, you know, to give you an idea of where we were, we were just down here talking about uh, 5.15, we're now up here. And um, I used the study to map this, and the study also said that they had no concerns about the firing point, and uh, as far as UXO, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, the study classified this um, as a four-room structure made of tires that are used to train teams and individuals on the techniques of entering, clearing, and securing a building and its rooms. Ordnance used here was restricted to small arms, fragmentation hand grenades, and plastic explosives. Now, obviously the tire complex is long gone, but this is the area that it was located in. And we go to our um, low resolution view. We are now here. Okay, uh, another location, Empire Range. Now, this location was uh, reported by Brian She, and uh, this was called uh, Camp Bayonet. And uh, again, I used the study to locate, to get the location and so forth. And um, the study did indicate this is uh, an area of high unexploded ordnance concern. And they're uncertain what efforts may have been done, excuse me, to uh, clear this. Um, I'll show you in a minute here uh, why they have concerns about it, but the area was all within here. And uh, Brian described it as, uh, uh, he came out on the dirt road and there were screen buildings, a uh, concrete pad with uh, a top and two small guard shacks. Uh, you can see how the area has, this is a current view, has the appearance of being cleared. Um, and if we look at our 1969 view, you'll see that uh, the area appears cleared here also. And that's just our range location. The study says that Camp Annette may have been used as a bombing range and as an ammunition destruction site in the past. Um, Part of what they did in this study is they went back with uh, through any available documentation on how the different locations were used within the range over a period of time. Okay, and our 
last point, and I'll back out a little to give you perspective. Okay, we're now here at 24, and this was uh, uh, a site of a communications bunker. And we'd looked at the, the different um, um, firing points up in here, Camp Bayonet. And uh, the purpose of this was uh, for retransmission of communications. And this was actually reported by a number of people, um, Brian Shi, Todd M. Young, Kevin McElroy, and Jack Allred. And uh, Todd Young commented, there was a bunker on top of the hill that we used for retransmission site during training. The vegetation was always browned around the bunker, and he pointed out where he thought it was um, by giving a link. And his link uh, actually comes out to the bottom of the, the hill. Uh, the top of the hill here obviously has a number of structures and so forth and may still be used in some capacity. And to give you a better idea, the area he's talking about uh, with the, the bunker and so forth, you know, he said on the top of the hill and you can see different structures and trails and so forth going up to the top of the hill here. And on our um, 1969 low resolution, you can see that obviously this has uh, um, been kept clear. There we go. That's uh, Empire Range. I'd like to thank veteran Richard Wyman for putting together all of this information on possible places to test in the Panama Canal Zone. We are further than we have ever been before. We have a rulemaking request that has been granted by the VA Secretary. We have an HR 5026 bill for Panama introduced into the Congress.